folks. Welcome to Christ Church at the Grove on this glorious, beautiful day, the one that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I hope you've got your mind made up, folks, to enjoy today. Amen. If you're not going to enjoy today, what day are you going to enjoy? And um, you guys, we've got a couple special things today, but let me start off by... Uh, Simply saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Amen. First and foremost, our heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. But folks, then we also want to acknowledge uh, that today is Father's Day. And um, amen. We are to honor our father and our mother. Commandment number five. <laughs> Amen, folks. So uh, I, I pray that you will um, do that today. Amen. Whether they're alive or deceased, amen, and various degrees of, you know, better fathers than others. You know, that's the truth about mothers, and it's the truth about fathers. Uh, but folks, may we find today a way to honor them, even if it's just in remembrance. And uh, with that, I do want to acknowledge... Um, a couple things before we do a little, before we do a, uh, a baby presentation, okay, a child presentation. Um, and that way you guys will be, you know, it will be over with and you can hopefully enjoy more the rest of the service. <laughs> but you guys, uh, and, and it's, it's a shame because he's not here yet. But uh, one, of our, one of the oldest fathers of our congregation uh, would be Bill Spencer who just turned, I believe, 91 today. All righty, and he had mentioned to me on Wednesday that, you know, he was pretty proud about it. <laughs> Amen. So we rejoice with him. Uh, but, but he told me specifically to say to Joe Frezzo that he's trying to catch up to him. <laughs> Joe, you're, you're, you're 91 already, right? So, yeah, Bill just turned 91 today, so if, if they join us, feel free to say, you know, happy birthday to, to Bill. And um, uh, you guys, I, I want us, before we do the, uh, the dedication, an acknowledgement, amen, first and foremost, again, our Heavenly Father, who's so good to us. Um, but I, I know a gentleman, his name's Keith. Some of you from uh, Keith Hirschberger, from our years of youth camp experience up in um, Mifflinburg, Pennsylvania. For years, him and his wife were part of the teaching staff there. And um, he's just, you know, he's two years older than I am. So he's a young man still. And, um, but he has uh, discovered some kind of uh, issue with, you know, uh, hemorrhaging of, in the brain and emergency surgery and you know I don't, I'll spare you the details but you know pretty much life and death and um, so we're going to pray for Keith all righty uh, he's a wonderful man a wonderful father uh, some of our campers remember Jill and Amy and and uh, Ryan Hirschberger um, and also uh, Lena's dad amen uh, hopefully Lena we haven't spoken since but hopefully recovery mode of some kind at this point amen i'm sure still in need of prayer all righty and uh you guys uh i i want you to as we pray i want you to utter your father's name in honor okay and uh, i couldn't help but wonder if anyone has a father whose name is more uh, unique than my father's name Okay, so my father's name is Casimiro. Mm. <laughs> Casimiro. Not Quasimodo. Not, <laughs> not Casanova. <laughs> Casimiro. Sally? Yes. So my father is Anastasio. 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 Hmm, that's pretty unique. <laughs> His last name is Estasio. Anastasio, Estasio. <laughs> Amen. We honor him. <laughs> okay, the combination of that may have beat my dad. Okay. 
Casimiro Quintana. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone have a father's name that is really kind of unique that uh, you want to put into the arena? Huh? Somebody? Oh. Oh, Sandra. Horace? Yeah, that's unique. Horace. Paula, what's your dad's name? Orville. Or Orville. Orville Wright. I'm sure... Oh, is that right? So that's a family name, Orville. Right. Bronda? Axel. Axel. Yeah, yeah, I like Axel. <laughs> Frida, what's your dad's name? Woodrow. Amen. <laughs> Kathy? Isaiah. Amen. Gwen? Brady. What was his last name? Grimes. Brady Grimes. I like that name. Amen. Folks, as we pray, I would that you would utter, and if they're deceased, just utter a prayer of thanks. But do mention their name. Say, Lord, thank you for Orville. Right. Thank you for Anastasio. Amen. I say, thank you, Lord, for Casimiro. Thank you, Lord, for Isaac. Amen? Amen? Even as we pray for Keith and um, uh, Lena, what's your dad's first name? Joe. Joseph. Is it Joseph? Or, oh, either one. Well, God knows. Amen, folks. If you would utter a prayer for, for Joe, um, Lena's dad, he, he, he needs it, and uh, Keith needs it, and um, hallelujah. Precious Lord, what a privilege. Amen. Again, Lord, to be able to, in faith, Look inward and upward and say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name first and foremost, Lord. We, we, we want to honor you always and, uh, Lord, worship you here collectively. Uh, uh, Satan, we speak against you from, be, for, uh, from being a hindrance. And, Lord, because you are our heavenly Father, Lord, and you have commanded us in that fifth commandment to honor father and mother Lord, that would be every day. Uh, but dear God, our society has a special day, a, a, a holy day, a, a holiday, Lord, and honoring our fathers. So, uh, Savior, right now, dear God, we give you thanks for our individual fathers. Amen, Lord, that you blessed us with, uh, through whom you gave us life, and we're thankful for that. Amen, dear God. Bless those that are still alive. Uh, Lord, may the memory of those that have passed on, uh, Lord, be a blessing, as the Scripture says. Uh, dear God, I uh, join my faith in with Lena's faith for, for her dad, Joe. Uh, Lord, thank you for what's been done this, this past week in terms of uh, human medical effort. Uh, dear God, we know that healing ultimately must come from you. Lord, you're, you're, you're our creator. Uh, Lord, you made us, you, you can fix us. Lord, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Lord, for that we say thank you. Dear God, I lift up my friend Keith Hershberger. Uh, Lord, his family. Uh, Savior, a uh, devastating, difficult week. Um, Lord, they, they, they continue, Lord, to believe in you and, and have faith in you. Lord, even as they do all that is humanly possible. Lord, I pray, dear God, that uh, Keith's recovery after his major operation... Uh, would we'll go, we'll go well, uh, Lord, with no further complications. Uh, dear God, I pray, Lord, that there be healing, uh, Lord, complete healing. Uh, Lord, no loss of memory or no strokes or uh, any of these difficult things, dear God, that he's facing. And uh, Lord, may they have a new lease on life. Lord, may they appreciate each day, Lord, like we should, each day uh, as a gift from God. Uh, Lord, hear the cries of your people, Lord, as we have uh, needs, every person here of, in, of every kind. Uh, Lord, whether they be financial, physical, relational, emotional. Uh, Lord, we uh, pray for our nations. Uh, dear God, help us, Lord, to, uh, to, to learn, Lord, to live in, in greater peace and not at war. Uh, Lord, help our nation. Um, dear God, bless our community. Uh, Lord, thank you for all the recent graduations. Uh, Lord, we are a blessed, blessed 
people. Dear God, we thank you, Lord, today. Uh, dear God, for uh, Luke and, and Carrie, uh, Lord, all their family. Uh, Lord, in this time now, dear God, of, of uh, presenting uh, Kira, uh, Lord. And uh, Savior, have your way throughout our service with each of us individually and all of us collectively. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All righty. Well, with that, I'm going to ask Dad and Mom, amen, to come and stand here with me. Uh, and uh, uh, folks, most of you, we know Luke and we know Carrie, all right? But here's a precious little daughter, and she's a talker. <laughs> amen. She's amazingly bright, and she'll talk. <laughs> um, how old is she now, Carrie? 18 months. 18 months. Okay, so she's doing really, really good. Um, we're going to ask those family members. I see you taking some pictures and whatnot, but I'm going to ask you to join us if you would. Okay, and you guys can turn and face me, Carrie and Luke. Right. Okay, and the parents, Luke's parents, Rhonda and John Moline, uh, Bruce and uh, Paula. Amen. God bless my memory. <laughs> Um, you guys, I want to read a scripture, all righty, because uh, as I stay, I see three generations. And um, I, I want you to know in Psalm 78 that David was writing, and um, excuse me, it's actually it was Asaph, uh, one of the lesser known authors of, of the Psalms. But he says, I will open my mouth with a parable, I will utter hidden things, things from of old. Things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. And you guys, I'm, I'm presuming that, because I know you all to be Christian folk, that you have maybe some ancestors, someone from a prior generation that, that has helped you with your walk with God. Okay? Most of us do. All righty? Asaph acknowledged that. But then he says this, we will not hide them, these things that they received from their ancestors, we will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation, and I commend you, for you guys did share with Luke, you guys did share with Carrie. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. Both those that your answers okay, and your own life experiences with God. His power and the wonders he has done. Uh, he decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So that this next generation would know them. Even the children yet to be born. Amen. So what you poured into them <laughs> is meant to go on to the child who is yet to be born. But at this point, she's born. <laughs> Amen. And, and it says, and they in turn, these guys, will tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. You guys, you are blessed to have generational faith. That's so big. The good news is ultimately we all have, must have faith for ourselves. So today we are here, and I, I've heard it referred to as child, dedica uh, child dedications, except most children don't quite understand this. I refer to this more as parent dedication, grandparent dedication, and a, a child presentation. As a family, you're acknowledging. Luke and Carrie, you, apart from the blessing of one another, that's your next, and salvation, that's your next greatest blessing in God. Amen. It almost supersedes these folks. That would be the right order. Amen. So you guys, we rejoice with you today as uh, we present
So I'm going to ask you guys to lay hands on your daughter. You guys to lay hands on your son. Because the, the dedication part, you guys, is really a reminder to you <laughs> of the hope that, sh that God has of you've got it from that generation. Will you pass it on? And the hope is that you would pass it on. And our hope is that you would pass it on. The church family comes alongside as a help. It's not the church's primary responsibility for this for Kira in particular, that'd be you guys. The statutes and the laws of God, the good things that God has prepared for us as we follow him. So if you would join me in praying for your children again, that they would be wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly dedicated to the ways of God. As the parents of your granddaughter, Kira. <laughs> All right, more reason to really pray for these guys. So let us join us, please, in praying for these parents. All righty? Amen. Precious Lord, we uh, take this moment, dear God, to specifically uh, look to you. And so much gratitude, Lord. I thank you, Savior, for this example of uh, genera ge generational faith. And, uh, Lord, the blessings that come with it, dear God, is not to say, Lord, we're that uh, we're perfect, Lord, because we're believers, but, dear God, I thank you, Lord, for their testimony, for their practices. Uh, Lord, thank you for the gift of forgiveness, Lord, when all of us uh, mess something up in parenting and in, uh, in, uh, marital life. Uh, Lord, today is a beautiful day. Lord, as this family stands here. Uh, Lord, I pray, dear God, for Luke, uh, dear God, for Carrie. Uh, Lord, that their personal love for you would be strong this morning. Lord, that their commitment of faith would be strong. Lord, both for themselves, but dear God, even now, Lord, today, acknowledging that there's a new generation, Lord, that needs to know the Lord. So, Savior, we pray, God, that you would grant them wisdom and understanding, patience, uh, Lord, and uh, love. Gift them, dear God with these, your attributes, Lord, that they might flow and uh, impact Kira. Hallelujah, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray for Luke and Carrie. Amen and amen. Told you she's a talker. <laughs> amen. Okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to anoint her little hand probably. Okay, you guys, that's all right. You want me to go for the head? Oh, my mom said go for the head. Amen. Go for the head and the heart. <laughs> Amen. Folks, it's Carrie is the mom. Kira's the daughter. So you all work on that. <laughs> Amen. Jesus, in your precious name. Dear God, thanking you, Lord, for this beautiful life. Lord, thank you for the gift of another generation. Uh, Lord, the responsibility is awesome. Uh, dear God, this is such a precious child to you. Lord, and she belongs to you. Lord, your desire is that she would uh, return back to you someday as a believer. So, Lord, we pray right now for, for little Kira. Lord, thank you for keeping her through COVID. Lord, thank you for um, her brightness. Uh, Lord, for life, for energy. Amen. And, uh, Lord, we pray most especially, dear God, for her spiritual well-being. Lord, thank you. She's probably going to be fine physically in so many ways, uh, taking care of, Lord, loving family. She's among the truly, truly blessed. But dear God, what shall it profit a man or a woman if they should gain the whole world and lose their own soul? So, Lord, today we acknowledge she belongs to you. Uh, Lord, these parents are dedicated, these grandparents dedicated, dear God, to helping her to know you. Lord, I pray the fullness of all that you have planned for her. Dear God, especially salvation, Lord, as she grows, in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for being here with us today. You may uh, return to your seats. Uh, Luke, my friend, just to help you remember a little bit, okay, a little Bible, right, amen, amen. Uh, folks, we're going to enter back into our worship time and... Um, uh, I hope that you are 
clear in your faith and are able to worship the Father this morning as one of his children. Amen? Amen. How many of you are willing to say, I am a child of God. I have faith through Christ. Amen. Then folks, rejoice as we worship him. As the music starts, you're welcome to stand or you're welcome to stay seated. Uh, If you're free to raise your hands or clap them or pray out loud or pray quiet. However you worship best is what you want to do right now. Amen? God bless you. Lift your head, weary sinner, the river's just ahead. Down the path of forgiveness, salvation's waiting there. You build a mighty fortress, 10,000 burdens high. Love is here to lift you up, here to lift you high. straight and walked away unspeakable things you've done fix your eyes on the mountain let the past be dead and gone come on saints and sinners that you can outrun God remember none can overcome the power of the blood if you're lost and wandering Stumbling in like a prodigal child See the walls start crumbling Let the gates of glory open If if you're lost and wrecked again Come stumbling in like a prodigal child See the walls start crumbling Let the gates of glory open wide Let the chains fall. Let the chains, the chains, the chains, the chains, the chains, the chains fall. If you're lost and wandering, come stumbling in like a prodigal child. See the walls start crumbling, let the gates of glory open wide. If you're lost and wrecked again, come stumbling in like a prodigal See the walls start crumbling, let the gates of glory open wide. Let the gates of glory open wide. Let the gates of glory open wide.
Thank you, God. Amen. For God so loved the world. Amen. That he gave his one. Put that back there for me. Okay. Amen. That he gave his one and only son. For God so loved the world. And the scripture says that while we were yet sinners, God loved us. Christ died for us. Folks, you can't stop God from loving you. That's not in question. The issue of God's grace and how it can show up in your life, that is conditional. He can choose to bless in any way he chooses to. But folks, the, the issue of salvation, of your being a part of the body of Christ, the church, the, the believers, that is an issue of belief in Jesus Christ. It's the only condition that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. I want you to know this morning and be clear on two things, if nothing else, and that is that God loves you. You're not outside the scope of his love ever. You may not be pleasing to him, but he loves you. And man, parents understand that, right? But secondly, you guys, is the grace of God is like a mighty ocean. If you're willing to receive him, commit to him, surrender, whatever terminology you want to use, amen, I want you to know you're not going to miss the ocean. <laughs> amen. You're not going to miss the grace of God. It is humongous, but it is conditioned on faith in Christ. That's the Christian faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Amen. I'm going to um, point out real quick on your announcement sheet. Uh, uh, those attending youth camp, we will have a meeting on the 10th of July to discuss the details. Um, this coming Wednesday is when Edwin will start, Edwin Soledo starts his uh, series on finances uh, for the adult class. Uh, so please, if you don't normally join us on Wednesday night, uh, but this is a, something that is of interest to you, how to um, uh, more properly deal with in a Christian way regarding your finances, please join us on Wednesday night, okay, starting this Wednesday. Um, leaders meeting for, uh, is on the 28th of June, so that's in there. And please keep camp in prayers. So it'll come real quick now. Um, with that, you guys, those, if you came prepared to give, our offering baskets are on the little round table in the back of the room. Uh, please feel free to leave an offering. Uh, if you came prepared to give, you don't, no obligation, you know, they are in those baskets. And let's see, and, uh, okay, Bill Spencer is here. Amen. So let's say, happy birthday, Bill. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Marshall, you'll have to watch the beginning of the service. <laughs> Amen. We, we acknowledge Bill is trying to catch up to Joe Frezzo. <laughs> and um, with that, you guys, I think we're ready to dismiss our, our, our youth classes and children's ministry and nursery class um, and their teachers and helpers that we appreciate so much. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and dismiss them. And those of you adults and families that choose to keep their kids here, um, one more time, turning to Acts chapter 16. And today is the last of my little three-part sermon, but each of them stand by themselves. So you, you, you listen up, uh, even if you haven't been here for the other two parts, and, and, and uh, you'll get the gist of it, and you'll, you'll get something good out of it, I'm convinced. Amen, because I'm going to read scripture to you. Amen. I can never go wrong. You can never tell me I didn't feed you. <laughs> but from Acts 16, which is our starting point, um, one more time, starting at verse 12, as Paul is on his second missionary journey, and it says, and his uh, entourage is with him in verse 12, that we traveled to Philippi, 
So that's the city, a Roman colony, and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. And we stayed there for several days. And on the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. And we sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. And one of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. And she was a worshiper of God. And the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. Folks, we've covered this, and, and I'm not going to reiterate it at all, but this woman, Lydia, is a Jewish believer, a Jewish faith, um, uh, was originally from a, a city of Thyatira, but had moved to Philippi, where she conducted commerce, and uh, uh, there was a group of women that on the Sabbath day, because there was probably no synagogue in Philippi, would go out to the riverbank, and it was known enough that Paul, in his travels, went out there to be with these folks in their common uh, Jewish heritage. But Paul had a message. Paul had a message that took it beyond modern-day uh, uh, Judaism. And that message would have been the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. And um, uh, the Lord opened her heart, Lydia's heart, to respond to Paul's message. Folks, it comes a time in our lives, and most of us here are familiar with this, when you hear this message and maybe you've heard it in the past, and it was like water on a duck's back. But on your day, <laughs> for whatever reason, and some of us question those reasons, you're moved. It strikes you. Um, on the day of Pentecost, they called it a pricking of their hearts. And you know that God is calling your name. And asking you to receive him. And it's a glorious day when you do. When you surrender and say, yes, Lord. You take my life. I'm not doing that much with it anyway. <laughs> You've got better plans than I do. Amen. And this, this was Lydia's day, if you will. So she responded to Paul's message when she and the members of her household were baptized. She invited us to her home. Saying this, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Folks, I, I've used this text and this person of Lydia um, as a, um, an example of the, of the issue of belonging, which is the sermon series title, belonging uh, to the household of faith. Lydia knew that something had happened within her. Her, that she had responded to the message of Jesus Christ, she also acknowledged that these gentlemen that joined them that day for the prayer meeting were more experienced in the things of God than she was. And there was something in her that wanted their confirmation or affirmation. And she literally said, hey, if you, if you really believe that this has happened between me and, and God, would you come to my house? And she asked them to. Actually, she persuaded them to. It was almost like they looked at each other and they said, yeah, well, she expressed her faith and we believe in her heart. She believes. So, you know, if this is important to her, we should go to her house. And um, uh, you guys, I talked about the first week, the importance of belonging to the household of, of God. Um, last week I talked about the benefits. Very good. The first one was the importance of belonging. Folks, especially eternally, you want to belong to the household of God beyond this life. But it's also tremendous to belong now and to know that you belong. Um, there's benefits, and I... Went through a list. As a matter of fact, you know, I, I, the list is almost unending, to be honest with you. But I, I listed some things. And, and if you're interested, you can go to our website and, and look up the past sermons. And, and you'll see the list. 
Uh, I, I've told you um, already what the third one is. What's the third one? The importance, the benefits. And if, if today I'm going to talk to you about the responsibilities of belonging to the household of faith. Amen. I put it out. I've been putting these things out on the little marquee sign, you know. And, uh, but I want us to be clear that I'm talking to us about the responsibilities. Out on the marquee, I had to write responsibility because I ran out of eyes. I mean, we're going to have to buy some more letters. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, appropriate today being Father's Day and uh, talking a little, you know, and, and with little Kira and the responsibility of the parents to help her grow up well. That's a parental responsibility to help that child grow up well as best as you can. And I suggest Luke and, and Carrie Ray with the help of God. Okay, but uh, a part of my growing up training included this concept that with privileges come, right? How many of you kind of realize it now? Maybe you didn't at the time <laughs> that your parents were trying to do that for you. Amen. Most of our kids are not currently in here. Um, but yeah, you guys, that's, that's kind of a, 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 a no-brainer almost of parenting. That you, you acknowledge as they're growing up that they're deserving of greater privileges. Greater freedoms. Greater trust. And you want them to go in that direction. Greater independence. But with each one of these privileges comes greater responsibility. I mean, you th believe that's correct. Okay, good, good. Most that's that's almost the majority of you. With the privileges come the responsibilities. Amen. Last week I I, I went on for quite some time because there's so many benefits to belonging to the household of God apart from eternal salvation, which I don't want to minimize because that's big. All right. <laughs> A uh, couple of, and I'm, I'm going to the King James Version, the poetic 1611, you know, uh, English, just because it actually has the word benefits. Amen. How many of you, when you went for your job interview, at some point said, oh, yeah, and, and I mean, I know the pay, and you, know, and you told me about the job responsibilities. How many of you were interested in the benefits? Yeah, most people, you know, you, well, what are the benefits? Okay, uh, uh, Psalm 68 and verse 19 said, Blessed be the Lord who daily, I love this phrasing, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. I, I hope that you know God in that way. I hope that every day you're able to, to wake up and just uh, kind of look up and maybe utter it. Blessed be the Lord who is loading me with his benefits today. The fact that you're here lets me know that you're loaded with benefits. You have transportation. You've got a, a, a freedom of time. You, you've got mental acuity. Man, that means smarts. <laughs> Enough to be here and to listen and to understand. And not everybody has that today. You do. God is loading you with his benefits. Psalm 103, verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I heard a great message one time on this. It was called, Remember Not to Forget. That's the problem. You, folks, that's telling us, remember not to forget. Not to forget what? His benefits. Matter of fact, that's a trick of Satan. To get you to think that your life is nothing but problems. 
Folks, that's, that's a lie from the pit. That's a way of trying to get you so discouraged that you're not going to do better. But if you can start realizing and remembering, not to forget all his benefits, daily loading you, it'll bring you to this point of uh, Psalm 116, verse 12, where the writer says this, because they are remembering on a daily basis these benefits what shall i render unto the lord for all his benefits toward me folks isn't that a natural progression if you that's when you know that you're on the right track uh in, in your child raising hey listen you guys someday that little girl <laughs> that little cutie who is pretty much, for now, pretty much just interested in what she's interested in. You can't fault her for that. That's her stage of development, okay? But she's progressing and she's doing really good. One of these days she'll look at you and say, but Daddy, what do you want? And you'll go, wow. Isn't that a great time? You know, when they, they start developing to that point of maturing, that they realize it's not all about give, give, give to me but maybe I can give to you. It's a mild marker of natural development. It's a mild marker of spiritual development. So you guys, we're progressing. If you can, the importance of belonging, the benefits of belonging, the hallelujah, because of these benefits at some point, the responsibility that comes with the privilege of belonging. Amen. What's the great you know, John, you know, John F. K. statement? Ask not. That's my Boston accent. <laughs> That's as far as it goes. <laughs> Ask not <laughs> uh, what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. I mean, how many are familiar with that statement? Right, folks, in my mind, that just resounds. It brings the picture. Of, you can almost see it in black and white. That great statement. Well, why are we always asking for what our country can do for us? How about why don't you ask what you can do for your country? God help us. So let me talk to, uh, to you a little bit. Because it's interesting. Um, you know, this is, the la this is the only mention of this person. Uh, in the Bible, this person Lydia, how on the, on, uh, went on the missionary trip to a place called Philippi, there's a group of women that respond to the message, or at least definitely one woman in her household, that's Lydia. And how she, her only words that the Bible records is, if you, if you, if you receive me as, as part of your group now, will you come to my house? Spend a little time with me. And um, that's it. That's the story of Lydia. Except that there is some tracking of the idea later on that there is a group of believers in Jesus Christ at a place called Philippi. Because one of the epistles is the epistle or the letter written to the Philippians, to the believers in, in Philippi. I have a feeling, I don't know for sure, and probably no one does, whether or not it, that, that group of believers was actually, you know, uh, focused upon Lydia's house and branched out through the city after, you know, Paul and his companions left. But there is a possible connection there. So that um, you have a little congregation of believers, possibly Lydia leading it or influential in it, because she understood I belong and um, appreciated the benefits. We don't know about the responsibilities part. We kind of get that from you know other. 
uh, portions of the Bible. But you guys, it's just a, it's just a, almost a, a principle. With greater privileges or benefits, at some point comes this idea of, well, what can I do back? Amen. How many of you have ever prayed, oh, Lord, let my cup overflow? Have you ever prayed that? You know, the psalmist talks about my cup overfloweth in Psalm 23. How many of you have ever had a cup that overflows? Right? Of some kind. Amen. You know, you, you poured too much Coke in. <laughs> and you can see it all no. <laughs> Folks, that can lead to waste. Unless you realize that if you have an overflowing cup, you've got to spread it around somehow. Amen. The idea of overflowing, which I like the idea of overflowing in my life, but it places a responsibility upon me to do something with the overflow, which probably means it's for someone else's benefit, no longer just for me. That's part of maturing, you guys. So, uh, most of you know that we have a, our, our little commitment series, and this is just unique to uh, Christ Church at the Grove, this congregation that where you're at today, um, because that's the one I'm most concerned with. I like to think every church group has something like this that explains uh, what you should expect, but also what's expected of you. And um, I, I'm going to just point out as a way of reminder Hallelujah to our official members. And that's just because you're an official member because you, sign, you signed the membership book. How many of you signed the membership book? That's right, not all of you. Amen. We're happy for each and every one of you that's here. We believe, hopefully by faith, that you're in Christ and that you belong to the household of God, the big one. But I'm talking about the smaller one. That, Like Lydia was a, a, a Philippian believer. Right now I'm talking... And reminding uh, uh, those congregants of Christ Church at the Grove, official, of what the expectations are. Say, thank you, Pastor Ben. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> we like hearing about the benefits. But with the benefits come Responsibility. Amen. So um, in, in our little booklet, you know, there's four areas. And, and it's under this page 60 where it says, what is expected of me as a member? And, and the first one is, I will protect. So this is belonging to the household of God. Talking specifically our congregation. Thank God for the bigger household of God, the big C church. Amen. That I hope you're a part of by your faith in Jesus Christ. But uh, 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 Christ Church at the Grove, uh, belonging here, under, I will protect the unity of my church. Number one, unity by following its leaders. Amen. You guys, and let me say this to, to, to our church group. I'm so thankful that today uh, I feel real positive about these responsibilities that you have chosen to take and, and you're carrying them out. I'm not bringing this up because, you know, daddy need to spank you. <laughs> and daddy angry. <laughs> okay, that's not like that. It's just a good old reminder that uh, uh, as an official member, you have a higher commitment level to protecting the unity of, of this congregation. Uh, and it starts with following the leaders. Because the leaders are oh, so great, they're never wrong. No. My goodness, we, I, I hope we, you know, portray that well enough. And our leaders are not perfect. Okay? And, um, but they are the current leaders. And if you're, if you're going to flow with the unity of the group, well, then that means you're, you're following the leaders. By acting in love towards other members. Amen. Because not only are the leaders not perfect, but none of the other member, fellow members are. How many of you have noticed that? Amen. <laughs> sure you have. 
And the more you get to know us, the more you get to realize some of our positives and some of our negatives. But, but, but official membership for Christ is, is that you're going to act in love towards other members, um, and sometimes even when they're not deserving. Aren't you glad God loved you when you were not deserving? While we were yet sinners, I recorded that. And consequently, by uh, you guys, uh, and, and these are these bullet points, and it's interesting because, you know, I, I, I got this years ago from uh, 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 the Purpose Driven Church, I think, or Purpose Driven Life book. And um, there's so many more bullet points that you can put under all these headings. But, you know, he, he, those were some of his following the leaders, acting in love towards other members. But he put the refusing to gossip is one of the bullet points. Amen. Folks, the, the, the power of the tongue, that, uh, whether it's a, a congregation called a, uh, a church congregation or whether it's your congregation called your family, these things are applicable. And one of the greatest things you need to realize is, man, watch your mouth. There's such great power in the tongue, Scripture says. James chapter 4, I think. And, but, but I just want to read just a couple verses because there's verses listed for all this in our little booklet. And um, so th this idea of, um, you know, uh, watching your tongue, uh, reading from Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm just going to kind of jump because there's a couple verses. It says, uh, talking about the believers that were at Ephesus, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is uh, the head, that is Christ. So this is talking about Christ's body. Um, from him, from Jesus Christ, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as, as each part does its work. That's part of the responsibility of belonging is that you have a part to play in it. And... Um, uh, verse 25 goes, gets a little more specific about how you, we do our part. Therefore, and this was, therefore each of you, which is a part of the body of Christ, must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. So you guys, you, you can see, and uh, 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 verse 29, uh, which is not, do not let, listen, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Folks, how many of you are willing to acknowledge you've got some unwholesome thoughts? Okay, you might as well acknowledge because God knows them too. That's what scares me sometimes. Amen. People say, Ben, man, I've never seen you lose it. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, God has. <laughs> You know, that just makes me controlled. It doesn't make me wholesome in every one of my thoughts. I'm thankful, though, that at least I've realized that from here to here, there is some distance. And I'm supposed to do something with what's going on up here versus what comes out out here. And, and, and in case you adopt that attitude of, well, it's what I'm thinking, I might as well put it out there. Folks, that's the same as saying, I, you know, how, how many of you had the thought, I want to kill somebody? Thank God you didn't. There's a difference between here and out here. It's going to become more damaging when it gets out here if you don't deal with it up here between you and God. Amen. It's what Jesus Christ taught on the Sermon on the Mount. You know, uh, what he taught was not, well, since you're thinking, you might as well go ahead and, you know, uh, uh, you know and, and, and rape somebody. No. No, you've got a problem with God. At the point that you're angry with someone, it may lead to murder, but you don't want it to lead to murder. It's not a license to go ahead and do it. It's telling you deal with it up here and in here. Amen, folks. And likewise, we need to recognize and again, you guys, I'm not angry about anything because we're in a good place right now as a congregation. But each of us needs to watch what comes out of our mouth. Not unwholesome. And how do you judge this wholesomeness? Watch. 
only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. That it, that it may benefit those who listen. Not, not make you feel good because you gave them a piece of your mind. Of course, that was a piece maybe you, you can't afford to lose. Man, to, some people give them too much away. You guys have ever had a definition of love, of, of marital love? And, and uh, it, was, it said something to this effect that, that you do the daily little things that say, I love you, versus saying, I love me. That's pretty practical. That to love your spouse, to love your children, love your, to love well is simply to say what daily little acts can I do that communicate I love you rather than communicating I love me. So folks, we protect the unity. That's part of the expectation of, of, of congregational membership here. Uh, uh, number two, I'll share the responsibility. And there goes the word because it's in the little booklet. Um, I'll sir, uh, share the responsibility by uh, praying for its well-being, for its growth, our congregation, by, um, by inviting the unchurched to attend. Amen, folks. I thank God for other groups, other congregations that proclaim Christ. Not exactly the way we do, or maybe the slightly different practices. Da, 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 da. But uh, our, our focus, there's so many people who don't know Christ at all. That's who we want to focus on, you guys. Uh, by, so inviting the, the unchurched to attend by warmly welcoming those who visit. You guys let me know if somebody was cold to you. <laughs> Amen. Um, but you guys, that's part of our expectation. You know how hard it is to get some people to show up at a church function? Very hard. When they're here, you guys, make sure you're warm toward, towards people. Amen. You know, God loves them all. We treat them warmly. Amen. Um, I will, number three, serve. The ministry of my congregation or my church. Uh, that was one of the benefits of being together is ministry opportunities. The fact that you, we can do more together, not just more, but maybe more diverse because, um, you know, James and Mary Lou, they have a feeding ministry to the poor, to the, the poor, more needy folks in Westchester sometimes, sometimes in Elkton, uh, sometimes, you know, they do it at, at Oxford. You know, how many of you are ready to start a program like that? How many of you, because you, you better be doing a lot of fishing like James does, because that's what he feeds them, fish. And you better like to clean it and cook it and, uh, and, and, y- how many of you might be willing to come alongside of them and do it? Amen, right? Because some of you do. Uh, uh, so you guys, there's these service opportunities. And let me tell you something about belonging to the household of faith. Um, okay, our group is not one, and I don't want to get to no theological debate about it today, some other time. Once saved, always saved, not quite the way we see it. You know, start in faith, you must continue in the faith. Uh, somebody uh, wrote in a book, uh, an indicator of longevity for Christians. In other words, things that, and I think it was George Barna who does a lot of these studies. If I, if I was, but nonetheless, you know, signs that will indicate that you're going to be a long-lasting Christian. This was one of them I remember. He said, if after five years from the time of your conversion, you are not serving, you probably won't last. You guys, and I never thought about it, but when I look, uh, you know, back in my life, and I've been walking with God for a long time, yeah, I noticed a pattern, and it is true. 
if a person after, you know, a certain number of years is still all, you know, like it's all about me, God. You know, I come to church. Let's see what I get out of church. It's, it's basically all in this direction. They tend not to last. Whereas those who begin to take the overflow, the benefits, and say, goodness, give me some responsibilities too that can't just be about all this way. Amen? Amen, you guys. Uh, the last one here, uh, you guys, I'll support the testimony of my church um, by attending faithfully, by giving regularly, and by living a godly life. Folks, not only does it reflect upon God, because we've identified ourselves with him. The lo and the longer you've identified with him, the, m the more crucial that connection becomes. Um, but uh, it, it, it's also true about our corporate life. So as a member, amen, you should feel a higher sense of commitment to the idea of the testimony of our congregation. Amen. When, uh, yeah, I want you to be able to be proud and say, oh, Pastor Ben Quintana is my pastor. Likewise, I want you to be able to be proud about your corporate membership one with another. It's about the testimony of our group. Ultimately, for the greater glory of God's name, I get it. But it, it comes into effect, you guys. And uh, yes, I expect more of the members. I like you members that you attend regularly. And some of you, you know what? If you're not going to make it, you call me or you shoot me a text. And you say, Pastor won't be there this Sunday. I never told anyone that they had to do that. But, you know, we're a small enough congregation that I, I can look around. I can see who's missing and, and wondering, you know, especially in two or three or four weeks. I, I, I expect a little higher from those who are official members, just like I expect even higher from those who are leadership. These guys have got to do with the corresponding responsibility to the ever-increasing privileges and benefits of belonging. How many can see that correlation? All right. Hey, hallelujah. God bless you. Um, let me just close with this. That official membership has you um, signing the membership book officially to be in as a congregant of Christ Church at the Grove, not as a person of belonging to the kingdom of God. That's just faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're clear on that. There is a process for officially leaving. How many know what that process is? Sandra? You write a letter. <laughs> Amen. Again, I thank God. It's not like I'm expecting a bunch of letters this afternoon. <laughs> We're not there at like that stage. <laughs> but I just want to remind you, you guys, to help, help me out a little bit. Uh, that, you know, that you felt led of God to join Christ Church at the Grove. At the point that you feel led of God to leave, you would write a letter. And, and you could address it to Dear Pastor Ben or Dear Christ Church at the Grove. Uh, I'll make it easy on you. You don't have to get into all the details of why you're leaving. Uh, chances are I probably have a pretty good idea. So in the letter itself, you don't have to. I'll be happy to talk to you. It may help us if you would explain, you know, or it may be simply you're moving out of the area. Or it may be that you're having a faith crisis and you're not going to go anywhere. All those. But as, a, as, as you officially sign in, you actually officially sign out. And we'll write your letter back and say thank you for being with us and we hope we helped you while you were here. 
But if you don't write that letter, and after six months, you get a letter that says, well, gosh, you ain't been around, you know. And our bylaws say that if you're not going to regularly attend and regularly support that you're, you know, that you're rescinding your membership. That's part of our bylaws, you guys, that you said was fine with you when you signed in. <laughs> Help me out a little bit with this, folks. And again, I don't want a bunch of letters this afternoon. Thank God. Amen. I'm not anticipating that. But all these are the corresponding responsibilities. Amen. Consider your helping out uh, in some ministry. I'll, I, you know, we always need help with the children's ministry. Kids are tough. And no, nobody wants to come to church every week after week after week. And even though, and now some of them are willing to, man, just spend all this time always with the kids. But I, but I know that they need this. Right? They do. All of us need this. Um, the cleaning around here. I mean, I love when people say, man, you guys got a clean church. And I, say, I think to myself, hallelujah, thank you, God, for team one, team two, team three, team four. <laughs> you know, four different teams with different members uh, who on, a, you know, first Sunday, second Sunday, third, you know, we rotate the cleaning. Amen. And uh, you can be a substitute. Hey, Hallelujah. We'll give you on-the-job training. <laughs> this is a broom. This is a mop. <laughs> Amen. You guys, it's part of belonging. Lydia would have said thank you for coming to my house. But I do believe that possibly she was the pioneer of the church that would develop in Philippi. And that probably there was more things that she ever envisioned as a result of joining this household of faith but I like to think that she did it because she so realized the benefits that she hit that point where she said dear God what can I render unto you that's a fancy way what can I give back to you Lord for all that you've given me now now that's a beautiful right spirit and you know what service becomes a joy too Amen. I love it when one of these cleaning persons tells me how much fun they're having. And folks, they're having fun because they're doing it unto the Lord, because they get to meet other people, because they get to know us a little bit better, imperfections and all, but all in all, they like the people they're meeting. It's a beautiful thing. It works that way in all of it. So hallelujah. Let's stand, if you would. Amen. So happy for each and every one of you that's here today with us. My greatest hope is that you're good in your heart by faith with God Almighty through Jesus Christ. Okay? But belonging to that universal big C church of God, his plan is to make you a member of some specific part of the body. And that's called congregational life. And I know that, all, you know, if you stick around long enough, somebody bothers you enough, somebody may even hurt you. It may be somebody that is in a, in a leadership position, unfortunately. And, you know, you can really sour. But you will never become everything God wants you to be if you don't participate with the body of Christ. You, may, you can be saved by your faith in Christ, but you will never develop into everything because he set it up to be interdependent with other believers, other messed up people just like you <laughs> and Pastor Ben. So I thank God for recognizing the importance of belonging and hallelujah, the benefits of belonging and the responsibilities of belonging. Amen. And if you've given your heart to Christ, even sitting here today, if you've said, oh, God, have mercy on me, I, I do believe in you. I, don't, I haven't professed it. I have, uh, but Lord, I, you, then please talk to someone who does know him and get connected somewhere. And we'll be happy to have you here. I'll be happy to baptize you. You don't even have to be a member here to be baptized. Amen. That's just solidifying your identification with Jesus Christ, your personal baptism. All right, but after that, folks, we all do belong somewhere within the body of Christ. 
It's important. It'll benefit you. And it'll give you a chance to operate and uh, give back. Hallelujah. Precious Lord, we thank you so much, dear God, for this past three weeks. Lord, uh, uh, Lord, experiencing what Lydia would have experienced. Lord, first and foremost, just a newfound relationship. Lord, she was a worshiper of God as they, they did it in the Old Testament. But Lord Jesus Christ changed everything. The ultimate sacrifice uh, just a, uh, a connection with him is sufficient to make us uh, have the right to be called children of God. Unbelievable. Thank you, Lord, for that faith transaction in our lives. But, Lord, we also thank you, dear God, for the further um, sense of belonging. Uh, dear God, for most of us, it, it's called corporate life or congregational life. Lord, even as he sought out from Paul and his companions, if, if, if you'll confirm me, if you'll kind of acknowledge I am part of this family. Lord, we thank you, dear God, and specific for Christ's church at the Grove. Lord, we, even while we acknowledge a lot of brothers and sisters uh, in Christ, uh, Lord, throughout this community and the world and other congregations. Uh, Lord, but with the uh, great benefits, Lord, we today have focused uh, Lord, on the concept of responsibility. Lord, we want our children in the natural to grab that concept. Lord, I pray that you would help each and every one of us to grasp that concept spiritually. Lord, the next generation is depending, Lord, on this generation doing its job well. Uh, Lord, thank you for what has transpired here today. Uh, Lord, blessings uh, on all of our fathers. Uh, Lord, blessings on, on, on the... Moline and, and Kershaw family, uh, Lord, blessing on our children, amen, dear God. May we honor you well by um, what we do and say this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Folks, God bless you. Love on your daddies well, folks. <laughs> amen.